two top two top victories for Little Ohio State has been 2012 Michigan State and then 2013 Penn State. And I'm kind of wondering about the chicken and egg effect. Is it because those chicken are great, egg. yeah, great wins during the good season that we talk about it, or do all great teams have that moment where things click for them? I think I guess exactly. might. the answer is true that uh, every great team has that moment. Very rarely do you just run, you know, just have one of those great, you know, just years. Uh, so I can go back as far back as uh, I've been coaching that you have those moments. And Wisconsin that we just had was that, you know, that's kind of over and we got to keep pushing. But that was one of those moments. And the moment is this is that someone has to make a play to go win that game. And guys that maybe haven't in the past half. And Noah Brown, obviously, he's, you know, his first year really playing. Uh, made a great play. And then, so, you know, Sam Hubbard's and Taekwon Lewis is, and, and those guys made some plays to help us win. But I, I know exactly what you're saying, and we, I hope that becomes it. It's too early, though. We've got so much football left. Unrelated note, but, I mean, the last two games Joey Julius has played in, that player's been ejected for. Joey Julius. Yeah, their kicker. Um, has Kerry Holmes come up with a a way to stop him from being the hardest hitting kicker in college football? Yeah, we watched him today, matter of fact, and, and uh, uh, he's good. We just got to be aware of him. Second or left, Bill? Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, Urban, just want to ask you again about Dante Booker. I know I asked you last week. He's at the good. End of his words. He's, he's going to play this week. He's going to play? He's going to play, yeah. Uh, Ari? Urban, uh, we asked Dante on Monday about um, – his punt return decision making. Um, at times, it looked a little bit scary, like he might have turned it over on one. And I was just wondering. He said that he wants that you guys always urge him to be very aggressive because um, every inch matters in this game. And I was just wondering what your take was on how he performed when you saw, uh, you know, in the punt return game on film, and were any of those a little bit too scary for you? Oh, uh, I, I saw if we would have blocked one, we would have had a shot of a big return. We, you know, I, I like aggressive guys, and everything about our program is somewhat aggressive. Uh, there's a difference between non-intelligent and over-aggressive, and we have to watch that. But I always like to slow people down as opposed to in encourage them. So we have a kind of a culture mentality around here. We're going to go after and, and be very aggressive. So after, uh, I'm so tied up into this one, I can't remember. I think he did okay, and if he didn't, we corrected him. Um, you're talking about Pumper against Wisconsin? Right, yeah. There was one where he muffed late in the game, it seemed. And he said he never thought he was going to lose it. but third quarter might have changed the game dramatically. It did. We won. <laughs> <laughs> Second row right. Ben? Urban, we've talked about Saquon Barkley a couple of times this week. And is the fear with a guy who's a potential first-round pick that you can do everything right and he can still just take over a game? I talked to Coach uh, Fickle right before we are going out. I said, just give me some thoughts that your biggest concerns. And he said, the tailback, you can have everything locked down. And, and he creates plays. And that's a little bit like our JT Barrett. Noah Brown, when you're covering and he makes it play. So great players have, uh, that's what's making, makes them great, is even when it's not there. Because a lot of guys can do when it's wide open, go run the ball, but he's dynamic. Uh, front row right, Austin. We're going to talk about uh, Noah Brown making that clutch, meaningful play. What makes a receiver uh, good in those tight spaces? You obviously, have the one of Oklahoma as well. Uh, the receiver. Do you practice that? Do you just have to be born with that? Oh, no, you have to practice it, develop it, work it. And uh, Mike Thomas be develop, developed that. Uh, Noel Brown kind of had that when he got here. He's worked on his body and his elusiveness, but he's always had uh, those ridiculous hands that, you know, I don't want to jinx him, but when he usually gets near it, he's going to come down with it. And he's a, you know, he's different than, a, you know, Curtis Samuel. He's a big body guy that, you know, contacts is his friend. Smaller receivers contact is not their friend. He's a guy like Mike Thomas. He's better in those tight situations with people. Front row right there, Bill. You asked about this a little bit the other day, but you guys are really good in the red zone on offense, but especially on defense, giving up four touchdowns and 16 times. Um, what? Why do you think you've been so successful in that? Uh, good players, number one, is always the reason. Number two is I think our, our scheme and our players believe in it. Number three is because we practice it an inordinate amount of times, you know, probably relative to most other people. Every third day in uh, spring practice, we're in the red zone. Every third day of training camp, we're in the red zone. And uh, our defense, this group, especially this staff, especially wants, you know, most defense coaches get a little, why are we going red zone again? Why are we going red zone again? Our guys thrive in it because they want to get, that's the money area. 
So every other situation is kind of you know, correlates with how many times that happens in the game. For example, you don't practice third and ten more than what you're actually going to see in a game. Red zone, in our mind, is completely different. You're only going to see it four times again. We practice it multitudes more than that. So it's in, does that make sense? That's not that doesn't correlate. However, that's the value we place on it. Is it? Does your scheme change? Does the mentality change? Is anything different about the way you play defense? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I mean that's. I think so. I think it's you get what you um, emphasize, and that's obviously emphasized around here. And it's one of the plans to win, score in the red zone. And it's not field goals. That's we don't get paid to kick field goals. And our defense, if it's red zone opportunity for them, um, stop them to force a field goal. So. Far left, Mitch. Can you talk in more detail about Barkley and what you see he's doing so well this year? Uh, he, we saw it last year too. He kind of had it coming out. Uh, we didn't really know who he was that well because he didn't have a lot of success. But uh, after our game, and, and you see him this year, he's picked up where he left off. He's, he's one of the top backs in America. Elusiveness. All right, Jared. Remember, you mentioned uh, Dante coming back this week. Is about Jerome, the season he's put together, the guy who wasn't starting, he was your leading tackler at Wisconsin. How far has he come in those weeks of development? And how do you see him continuing to play with Dante still there? Uh, I didn't say Dante is going to start. I mean, he's not quite at 100% yet, but we still, it's only, what is it, Wednesday? But he's is cleared to play. Uh, you have to talk to Coach Fickle more about that. I don't micromanage how he manages his personnel. We need them all. This is a long season. And, uh, you know, we have a rotation at defensive end now with Jalen Holmes, Hubbard, and Bosa, and there's one other one, Taekwon. So that's kind of, you know, Dante, when he comes back, will be a starting linebacker at Ohio State. Now, does that mean he'll be in the first team? I don't know, but he'll play when he's 100%. In terms of what Jerome has done? Uh, I think it's great. I think he is a guy that we saw that talent last year. That's why we decided to play him. Even, I want to say he missed the first five games because you started thinking about red, you know, I hate that word around here, red shirt, and then play him. He's too good of a player. So we saw the talent, and uh, he just, he's, he's really doing a nice job. Front row right, Tim. Yeah, Irvin, uh, a couple <laughs> things. Number one, uh, you talked about Noah Brown a while ago. Do you see uh, uh, other young receivers making steps that you want to, you've been wanting to see in the last several weeks? I mean, James Clark had a pretty big catch last Huge week. Uh, obviously, I do. I, I just, I, I'm not, we're not near satisfied. We're not where we need to be at that yeah. position yet. Uh, you know, Corey Smith's injury has kind of set us back a little bit, too. We count on him, and he's got that. I think we're going to get some playing time as we move forward. He had surgery really? on his wrist. He's going to yeah. get his hands, use of his fingers back. So, uh, no, I think that's an area we still need to improve. That's what I was going to say, because you talked about this earlier in the week about guys fighting off man covers, you know, creating space. I mean, is that, is that just young receivers learning? Obviously, some of those guys aren't young, but they're inexperienced. Is that just them learning their craft? Or how would you? I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's all the guess, above. Yeah. It's all the above. I mean, it's, it's like what. What makes a defensive end become a great pass rusher? Technique, but then he's got to do it. Yeah. And uh, we're, I'm not, we're not panicking. We're, we're not where we need to be. Um, at times, we play very well. Like you said, James Clark got an incredible play to get us going. Noah's been pretty consistent throughout the whole year. Paris is a big play waiting to happen. So we're, we're just we're developing a little bit. We're having a little bit of growing pains in that position, but we're, we're going to be good. I want to quickly. Uh, Defensively, then the more you've studied them, this I'm talking about Penn State. Does anything jump out at you about? I mean, have, have you seen some improvement in recent games? And what? Yeah, what their you last uh, two games, they're not, they're they're playing. There's a lot of energy right now in that program. And wins do that for you. And their last two games, they played their best game obviously against Maryland all the way around. And final questions, Clay. If we win the uh, Trotters in the World Series, what would that mean to you? Well, that would be great. Now, someone said they're up in the ninth inning. Any well, updates? It's bottom of the ninth right now. What? Yeah. What? What? Bottom of the ninth right now. I know, but what's? I know. What's Nobody out. Any Nobody else? Out. It hasn't it's started. Just started middle of the ninth. <laughs> 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 Huge drive, man. We had. I'm sure you saw. We had the Cleveland Cavaliers show up, and I told people there's two types of people in this world: those from Cleveland and those who wish they were. <laughs> the team got a good, just like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, thank you thank very you much. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach.